we have to find a way to lower the operating cost. That's one of the things that I've heard from a multitude of, of team owners and drivers, especially the, the journeymen, the people that are chasing the dream is that it's just so expensive. And I, I don't, there's a, so even if you did have a, co a corporate sponsor and it wasn't, it was significant, but not crazy. You could call that a full blown sponsorship and operation right. and a funded deal because the operational costs were so much lower. Now yeah, I mean, the I threshold to of... get to that point is like so high that uh, uh, almost everybody falls under the hobby deal because because you know they're they're in the red and only a few teams are actually able to make it in the black because of the operational costs. I, I think a, that's one of the most significant challenges. Have to write a book on that. This. I mean that that challenge there. There, there's a couple of points to be made. First and foremost, I know that this isn't something that's going to happen overnight, but I do believe there's a pathway. Uh, you, you, I've talked to so many tuners and crew chiefs and team owners who are so quick to, to come up with, this is a resourceful group of people. So there's a, the dichotomy here is that as, as much as there is a problem, potentially. And, and as my friend Paulie likes to say, we don't have problems, we have opportunities, but the, that's, why the Paul, opportunity that's why Paul is successful is why Paul, in case you ever wondered, I mean, I'm telling you what, man, outlook matters. And I think the opportunity that exists on one side here, uh, is we've got to find ways and there are opportunities. We've got to find new ways to, to bring revenue in secondarily, we, while simultaneously reducing the overhead. But I think the, the, the magic could happen when you understand where you're at. Like, so I think one of the things that, and I'm sure this may, maybe these studies have done, maybe this research has been done, but if a guy could perhaps understand like what the minimum amount is, like what kind of exposure, what kind of brand opportunities, what kind of difference can a race team make for a business? Let's just say that it cost a million dollars to sponsor a top fuel team for a year. You have to find a way to provide them many times more than that in, in value. So that value can come in a lot of different ways. Are those new customers? Is that brand uh, awareness, brand recognition? Is that hospitality? Is that corporate reward systems? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to skin that cat. I mean, and, and a lot of teams in our space are being very creative. I mean, look at Pro Stock. Camry Caruso does a fantastic job navigating a slew of different sponsors. We've seen Alex Laughlin do that for years. We've also seen some teams that have real deal support. Erica Enders, I think this is a really meaningful thing for people to know is that that is a fully sponsored race team. The operation of that team is more than covered via sponsorship support. And it speaks to the job that that team has done and Erica has done in building her, her following and, and being able to demonstrate significant value. But like, even if we get it close where it costs a million dollars to run a team and you can provide a million dollars worth of value to a sponsor, what's in it for the race team? And that's, I think, part of the problem is that there, these racers, and we've seen it infinitely, and I think it's been demonstrated recently. One of my go-to sayings is the bigger splash they make upon arrival, the quicker the exit. I mean, I've seen it time and time again. When we see a guy come in and run a limited schedule in a high ranking category and then slowly expand that schedule, maybe commit to a full schedule, that that process, we've seen it unfold successfully much more frequently than we have the team that comes in, run two races with a single car operation. By race three, they've got a funny car too and a top fuel dragster. By race 10, they've got a pro mod car, a top sportsman car, a motorcycle, and they grow too quickly and it's not sustainable. Uh, and success is, is very difficult to achieve in that. But my point there is that we have to find a way to leave some, have something be left over for the racers to make the juice worth the squeeze. But my the other side of that is because of the station we find ourselves in. Have you looked at the entry list for any NHRA national event? I mean, it is business owner, CEO, high ranking executive, board member at Ford Motor Company. I mean, these are some of the most connected, successful, powerful, influential people in the world, not just in motorsports. I mean, these are people that have billion dollar operations, multi-million dollar operations. And you can't tell me that we can't take that group of people and set them in a room and say, hey, we have to reduce operating expenses by 10% from this year to next. What's, let's come up with something. 
And I mean, obviously, we, we've worked with a committee now for the last almost year, and we understand the challenges, that that's not easy. But it does take an army. And there are enough people, enough talented, smart, resourceful people that I feel if an effort was put into solving that problem, this is a group of people that can solve it. The drag racing community, these are problem solvers by nature, and they're rapid problem solvers by nature. And we need to give them an opportunity to amp to solve this problem, but I don't know that uh, that opportunity is really existing.